Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. God bless you. Those of you that are coming in tonight, uh, by way of Facebook, and those of you that are watching, we ask you to tag and to share. Call a neighbor. Call a friend. Let them know that yours truly, uh, Bishop H.L. Butts and Pastor, Pastor Laura, we are live tonight on the conference line and we are live on uh, Facebook and for those of you that are watching tonight by the way of Facebook we encourage you to tag and to share uh, let a friend know let a family member co-worker let somebody know that Bishop H.L. Butts and Pastor Laura are live tonight and yet another PWW, a powerful word Wednesday edition of the Power Faith Ministries. Yes. This is our Wednesday night live Bible class edition uh, of our ministry where we have an opportunity to come to you and share to you uh, with the word or from the word of God. And we're just excited to be here tonight. I'm sitting in with the very beautiful, oh. anointed, talented woman of God. Oh, you're so special. None other, bless you, none other than Pastor Laura, Laura Butts. We're here tonight, and uh, we're just so excited for those of you that are coming in tonight. We thank God for you. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, it is 7 o'clock, so we're going to begin our broadcast tonight. Uh, of course, there are individuals that who have their name on our prayer list, and we pray. Uh, we pray for those names that are on our prayer list. We pray for them regularly. We pray for them not only during our broadcast time, yes. but we pray. We want you to know we pray for you during our Wednesday noonday prayer. Uh, we call your name on Sunday morning during our Sunday morning worship service. And we pray for you, those whose names are on our prayer list. Listen, if you'd like your name or your loved one's name or friend's name added to the list, all you've got to do is call us at area code 313-574-3661. Right. And we'll be more than happy, more than happy to add your name, your name to our list yes. as we pray and bombard heaven on your behalf. Pastor, who are we praying for tonight on our prayer list? Yes, tonight we are praying for Mother Jamie Petway, Bessie Simmons, Aisha Griffin, Kalina Patterson, Clara Fort, Renee Rogers, Baby Elena, she's back in the hospital, so I need you all to call her name out, Baby Elena, Darlene Petway, Janine Evans, James McCauley, Daniel Gardner, Sabrina Thomas, Brianna Hunt, Sierra Taylor, Annie Graves, Victoria McKinn, Sean Mason, Ann Sisko, Taylor Starks, Brenda Porter, Mary Bradley, Lawrence Myers, Tyler Jackson, Barbara Allen, Katrina Butts, Kanisha Calhoun, and family, Oren Jackson, Virgil Pugh, yes. Darlene Foster, uh, Darlene Foster, Angela Morris, Reverend Willie Mae Johnson, Reverend Jean McKeever, Susan Thompson, Lance Holbrook, Por Sister Portia Pierce. We're also praying for the family of Minister Jonna Hampton, one of our members who passed away uh, yes. last week who lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. We're praying so for your family and the family of Charles Boyer. All those that are afflicted with the COVID and all of any ailments that you're dealing with, we're praying for you. The crisis with Russia and Ukraine and all unspoken requests. Listen, I want you to know that whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with tonight, dealing with God is able. Yes, he is. And I'll tell you, like I say, every Wednesday night, look to the hills, look to yes, the hills. God. From whence cometh your help, not some of your help, but all of your help come from 
the Father above. Yes. Come from down. It comes yes, from it does. Jesus. That's all of your help come from Jesus. All of it. And listen, whatever you need, we used to sing that song. God's got God's it. God's got it. He's got everything yes. in his hand. Yes. Pastor, would you pray for the names that are on our prayer list tonight Absolutely. as we believe God? <laughs> Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We thank you for all things. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for everything that you are to us, everything that you've done, that you're doing, and what you're going to do. We give your name the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. For we know that if it had not been for you who was oh, on our Jesus. side, God, we don't know where we would be. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for the opportunity just to lift our voices one more day and to give you praise. For it's another day that you've kept us, and we thank you. God, we come tonight on behalf of every name Thank that you. is on the prayer list, knowing you, that you are a prayer answering God, knowing that you are a miracle worker, knowing, God, that if you can't do it, it can't be done. Mm. Heal, God, every ailment now in the name of Jesus. Touch every, everyone, God, whose name is on that list. You know their needs, God, their desires. You know what they're dealing with, every situation, every circumstance, God. And we literally bombard the very gates of heaven, mm -hmm. asking you, oh, God, to do what only you can with do no other power by your me. mighty power. And we thank you for it now, God. Uh, and before we take it back, we'll add more to it. Every bereaved family now, God. Touch the Boyer family, yes, God. Lord, Touch the Hampton family, God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, lift their hearts, God, comfort them mm. now in the name of Jesus. And it is so. It is so. By your power, in Jesus' name we Jesus pray. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. God is so good. He is so good. He's awesome. I'm telling you, I don't care what you're dealing with tonight. I want oh, you to know Oh, my, God my, is, my. God is still good. Thank he's you, still, Jesus. Listen, he is still on the throne. Isn't that something? And he's able. And he's still able. <laughs> Listen, he's able to do what no other power can do. Yes, God. I want you to believe that night tonight. Believe that. That God can do what no other power can no do. No other power. What no other power. Absolutely. Listen, just by the way of announcements, before we go into the lesson tonight, I don't want you to forget Sunday is first Sunday. Yes. It is communion Sunday. And I know it's the day before the holiday, but listen. Before Fourth of July, but you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss being a part of the Holy Communion on Amen. Sunday. You don't want to miss it. It only comes once a month, and I'm telling you, you want to be a part of the Holy Communion service on this coming Sunday, the Sunday before Independence Day, the Fourth yes. of July. You come, and we're not there a long time, Pastor. Not at all. Service, not at all. service lasts. We're gonna be there from eleven. 11 a.m. to 12, to 12 noon, and then we're going out. You'll have the rest of the day to enjoy with your friends and your family. But don't, don't look, don't put God on second. Don't do it. Don't make God second. Don't put him on the back burner to enjoy uh, the 4th of July. That's right. Come on to service. Give God his due diligence. And then you've got the rest of the day to celebrate uh, with your family and your friends. But you come. And you receive the Lord's broken body and his shed blood on communion Sunday. Jesus said this. He said, for as often as you do yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. As often as you partake of the Lord's broken body and his shed blood. As often as you do this, he said, you do it in remembrance of me. So I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you to come first Sunday, this Sunday. Come with your white or your cream on. And let's be prepared to receive the Lord's broken body and his shed blood. All right? Amen. Pastor, do you have any other announcements you want to share? Well, just to remind you that every Sunday at 11 a.m. we're in-person worship on Facebook, YouTube, and the conference line for our Sunday morning uh, worship service. Every Wednesday we're right here for Powerful Word Wednesday at 7 on Facebook, YouTube, and the conference line. Every Thursday night uh, we're with our uh, host, Lady Cynthia. Uh, Lady Cynthia Galliard for our women's prayer, praise, and testimony. And tomorrow is going to be a very special, unique night uh, because we have uh, Prophetess Evangelist, my Aunt Joyce Hatton, as oh, the guest. Awesome. And so we that's want gonna everybody. Awesome. That's going to be awesome. And anybody that that's know her awesome. knows she is a powerful woman of God. She is not just my aunt, but she is my mentor. And we're excited about that. Now this Sunday, it is the day before the 4th of July, and as Bishop is 
uh, stated that we are um, we're going to be in our morning service. But at four o'clock, at four o'clock, for those of you that are able to go with us, we're going to be celebrating the 28th church anniversary with the key Cathedral of Love. Yes. With Apostle Designate Yolanda Tyson, and we've been knowing. Uh, Pastor oh, Tyson, Pastor Apostle Tyson, Tyson for, for literally over 40 years. years. I, I was a little girl. We've been knowing her for so years. long. And their theme is We're Built to Win. And the special guest speaker is our very own Bishop H.L. Butts. So for those of you that are able to go, the flyer is on my page. Again, this Sunday at 4, the Cathedral of Love, located at 34 Clare Street in Mount Clemens. So we're going to be there with uh, Apostle uh, Yolanda Tyson celebrating their 28th church anniversary. I'm Listen, excited. I'm excited, I'm excited about what God to be is doing. with, with yes. uh, Apostle Tyson. Yes, I, that's known, our friend. That's our I've friend. I've known Apostle Tyson since I, I first began preaching uh, over 35 years ago. Wow. Uh, over 35 years ago. Uh, 37 years. I'm sorry. I've been preaching now 37 years. And I met uh, uh, Apostle Tyson uh, around that time when the Lord first called me uh, into ministry. So I'm excited. excited I'm excited, 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 excited to be able to go over and to uh, share with her. Absolutely. In celebrating her 28th uh, church and a church and pastoral anniversary and. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm looking for a great time. Absolutely. With the Lord. Those of you that are available, that are come and go uh, with us, those of you, Power of Faith members that will come and go, I would love to have you come and support me uh, on that particular uh, day for that, that grand celebration. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other announcements? One more announcement. Next Tuesday is the big day. It's the big day. Uh, we almost didn't have it, but parents have been calling. And so next Tuesday, July the 5th, yes. will be the first day of the Ernest Paul Modoc Senior Summer Arts of uh, Summer Arts Camp, uh, Summer Summer Camp of the Arts. I'm so just excited doing, that we, so you are doing the camp. We again are this doing year. the camp again this Thank year you, after Jesus. two Isn't years of no camp because of that pandemic. And so, parents, it is only three hundred dollars for six weeks to get breakfast, lunch, snacks. We have so many other things. The flyers on my page. Um, and those of you that were like, I have, uh, uh, so many people have uh, donated, uh, that have given contributions, and so many people want to know what can I do. And if you're just one of those individuals that say, well, I can't give money, listen, something that children need in the summer, they need uh, snacks, they eat, 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 and water. Water, water, water. If you would like to bring water, the little juice boxes, potato chips, anything. All you have to do is bring it. Give me a call and, and we'll be Amen. there. So I'm just excited. And if you would like to donate, you can donate. Listen, New Direction Learning Center has their own cash app. And I will post it on my page, but it is dollar sign. NDLC for New Direction Learning Center, Laura. NDLC, L-O-R-A. You can cash out whatever contribution you would like to give. But we thank you all so much for those that have been supportive down through the years. So we're excited. Tuesday, 8 a.m., first day of camp for six and, and weeks. Pastor, let me say this. I want to encourage the parents, if you're looking for somewhere to send your children for safe. the summer, it's going to be a safe environment. They're going to be in a in an area where they're uh, they're going to be inside. They're going to in the, social the distancing, social distancing, mass, to be practiced, everything. But they're going to be inside of the church. Yes. The doors will be locked. Absolutely. There'll be no admittance, no admittance to the building from anyone other than parents and the children. Absolutely. And we're going to have someone monitoring the doors. Yes, Listen, will. your children will be safe. You you can go to work and feel comfortable that yes, your you children can. will be uh, safe during these six weeks of the summer camp. And this this camp is actually a camp that Pastor has conducted for the past ten years. Ten years for the last ten years, and uh, I'm telling you, every year it gets bigger and bigger and mm -hmm. bigger. As she stated, now for the last two years because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the cat. Absolutely. But we're resuming this year. And, I'm, telling and I'm, you, excited. I'm telling you, parents, I think you'll be pleased if I'm you, uh, excited. you enroll your children uh, in this camp and let them be a part of this of this great 
uh, this time of yes, we are. fellowship yes, with, yes, with yes. other children in a Christian Christian environment in a Christian atmosphere. Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor. Well, let's go to the Word of God tonight. I'm interested and excited about getting into the Word of God on tonight because we're talking about a word that the human family has failed to practice. Uh. The word love. L-O-V-E. Wow. The word love. It, it's a word that is commonly used, but it is a word that's very, very misunderstood. Mm. Misappropriated. And we're we're in the lesson tonight. We're one, lesson 1.4 for July the 3rd. And we're talking about love your neighbor. That's the yes. that's the subject of our lesson tonight. Loving our neighbor. Loving our neighbor. Our key verse is found in the book of Luke, chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 36 through verses 37. But before we read our key verse, I want to say this. That once we become Christians, once we become born again, mm -hmm. one of the first characteristics, and I say this all the time, one of the first characteristics that should be prevalent in the life of a believer is the way you act and interact with humanity. Amen. With people. It's your brothers and your sisters. The characteristic of love should be one of the first signs that people ought to see about you once you profess that you're born again. Amen. Not just that you go to church, but they should see something in the way that you conduct yourself That's and the way that you act and interact and the way that you, you, you treat people. For instance, if you, you've got a relative that you just don't get along with you, every time you see them, you and that relative have always got a issues, always an argument before the day is over. <laughs> but after you come into the knowledge of, 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 of Jesus Christ and have experienced salvation and expressed faith in Christ and you've been born again, you've been baptized, you, you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you've started attending church on a regular basis. When that person see you, the first thing they should be able to see about you is that, you know what, something's different Something about her. Something is different, absolutely. Not based on the, on the fact that she said that she's going to church now. Because <laughs> a lot of people go to church. That's right. But they should be able to say, you know what, I can tell something is different about her because of the way or him, because of the way that they're acting and the way that they're interacting and the way that they're treating me. Because me, me and him used to, we couldn't get along, with me, and her, me and her couldn't get along for nothing. But now Amen. she's just as sweet and pleasant toward me. So that's one of the first characteristics that I think should be expressed uh, in the life of a believer. Amen is when you learn how to treat uh, your neighbors, your, your fellow man, and, and display that characteristic of love. Pastor, would you read Luke in chapter 10, verses 36 and verses 37? That's our key uh, focus verse tonight. Uh, would you read that for us? Yes, it says, Which now of these three mm -hmm. thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Mm -hmm. And he said, he that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. Go and do thou likewise. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're talking about love for your neighbor. Yes. Our lesson opens up with a very interesting question. The caption opens up by asking us, who is my neighbor? Who? <laughs> who? <laughs> Tell who, me who is it that I'm supposed who, to be loving Who is my neighbor mm -hmm. I, I want you to read the caption for us Pastor read the caption It says who is my neighbor One of the primary reasons 
may have difficulty following the commandment of many, Jesus. Many, many have, yes. Many, I'm sorry, That's reasons. Right. Many have difficulty following the commandment of Jesus to love thy neighbor as thyself is because of a modern misunderstanding of who one's neighbor is. Mm -hmm. The modern concept typically entails a person with whom you live in close proximity. You have houses on the same street. You share an apartment building or the person's residence is within walking distance from yours. Mm -hmm. As the story in the lesson connection demonstrated, many times we try to pick and choose our neighbors from among the people we like. Mm. Those with whom we share commonalities or those who can benefit us in some regard. But through a careful study of Jesus' teaching, we will discover there is a difference between who we would like our neighbors those to be. Those that we want mm -hmm. our neighbors to be. Those folk that we would appreciate being our neighbors. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And who Jesus says our neighbors are. Who they actually are. Read on. Ultimately, if we do not understand who Jesus considers to be our neighbors, we might fail to accurately follow the second greatest commandment. It could also be argued that we cannot completely fulfill the first greatest commandment, which is to love God with everything we have until we learn how to accurately fulfill the second greatest commandment as well. Who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Good question. Mm. And here's the answer that Jesus was trying to convey here in this uh, 10th chapter of the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. Everyone everyone in proximity to you is your neighbor. Absolutely. Humanity mm -hmm. is your neighbor. We used to sing a song growing up at church that said you got you got to love everybody mm. if you want to see Jesus. You've got to have a compassionate heart for everyone. Yes. Now watch this. Everyone that you come in contact with that you have that you have a, a proximity to everyone that your your path cross or that your life touches Jesus wants us to consider them as our neighbors absolutely now I once heard a preacher preach this and it, it, to some degree it has truth he said now you can't accurate, accurately love everybody because you don't know everybody <laughs> But everyone that you have an opportunity to come in contact with, absolutely, there should be a desire inside of you to want to do good to them, to treat them right, to love them, and to express the love of Christ to them. Amen. Everyone that you that you have uh, contact with, mm -hmm. that you come in contact with, that you have uh, that you're in proximity to. Jesus is saying that humanity is your neighbor. Amen. Humanity is your neighbor. So this lesson comes on the heels of Jesus being tested by a lawyer. Mm. He's a religious man. He's an interpreter of the law. So just to give you a little insight on the lesson, I want to go back to chapter 10. And I want us to read verses 25, read verses 25 through 30 so that we can kind of see uh, what Jesus is talking about here as it relates to him talking about and sharing with us the fact that humanity is our, our neighbors. Everyone that we have an opportunity to come in uh, contact with in any proximity of, 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 of any type, right. they become our neighbors. Look at verse 25. Would you read that for me? Read. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, mm -hmm. what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, this religious man, this lawyer, this religious interpretator of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the word of God, mm -hmm. he's tempting Jesus. He wants to see how Jesus is going to respond to this question. Mm-hmm. About inheriting eternal life. Read. What does he say? He said unto him. What is written in the law? 
What's in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Listen carefully now. Mm -hmm. The law states, this is the, the law. When we start talking about the law, uh, uh, you, you, you're primarily talking about the first interpreted, recorded uh, books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Torah. And Jesus says, what does he say? Love the Lord thy God. What? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all of your heart. And with all thy soul. All your soul. And with all thy strength. All your strength. And with all thy mind. With all your might. And thy neighbor as thyself. And then he says, and then you got to do what? And love your neighbor uh -huh. as yourself. Mm-hmm. Woo. And you know, and it's interesting because that's what the, that's how the lawyer responded. Because Jesus told him, "Well, what's written in the law?" And then, yes. and the lawyer said, "Yeah, well, the law says thou shalt love the Lord with that." And so he knew that he knew what the law he knew said. What the law said, and then in verse twenty-eight, uh, Jesus Jesus says, "He said unto him, Jesus says, thou hast answered right. right. Uh -huh. This do, and thou shalt live." Yes. Verse twenty-nine. Now, now, isn't that funny? Now he he's asking Jesus. But then he turned around. But then he turns around and answers the question something? himself. He's testing Jesus. That's what he's doing. The Bible he, he says, tried, yeah, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees and those yeah. religious people, they always would, they were always trying to do something to trip Jesus mm -hmm. up, to get him caught up. But they, they couldn't trip Jesus up because <laughs> they forgot that he was the, he was the originator, the originator. Of, of the law. Absolutely. <laughs> read on, Pastor. Read. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, uh -huh. and who is my neighbor? Yes. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now stop there at verse 30. Stop there because we, we're going to get into, we're going to get into that, to that parable of the, uh, that parable, but that story of, of the good Samaritan. We're going to deal with that. Okay. But I just want you to see that Jesus is clarifying here that our neighbors are anyone that we come in contact with, that we are in any type of proximity to, humanity becomes our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And this ruler, this 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 lawyer was trying to justify himself by asking, well, who is my neighbor? How was he trying to justify himself? Because he was trying to figure out a way to justify him not being nice to certain individuals mm -hmm. and being nice to others. But the Lord wants us to be good and kind and to show love to humanity. All right. Yes. Yes. So, so we don't want to go into the parable of the 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 um, the story of the Good Samaritan yet. We're going to deal with that. But I want to deal with this. This lawyer tried to test Jesus. Yes. This religious man, this interpreter of the law, he tries to test Jesus. Read our mm -hmm. caption for us, Pastor. As our lesson text shows in multiple instances. Lawyers tried to test Jesus. The, the scribes, the Pharisees, the lawyers, the religious people, they were always trying to trip Jesus up. Mm -hmm. Always trying to find a loophole to trip Jesus up. Just, just like that time when they brought the woman that was caught in the act of adultery to Jesus. And, and they said, well, the law says that she should be stoned mm -hmm. according to the law. And what did Jesus say? Jesus is down there writing mm -hmm. on the ground. And he says, he who is without, without sin, sin, you cast the first stone. Let him cast the first stone. And you know what they did. They dropped the Bible said they dropped their stones and they all walked off. Mm -hmm. But read on, Pastor, read. In the instance in Matthew 22, mm -hmm. multiple individuals have been grilling Jesus about specifics concerning the Old Testament law. The previous section where the Sadducees asked Jesus questions about the resurrection demonstrated the atmosphere and the mood on that, that particular, particular day. day. Yes. The religious elites were out to trap Jesus and thought they and thought they could trick him by asking pointed questions about the Torah. Now remember I told you the <laughs> Torah, the Torah is are the five the first five uh, books of the Bible. The first five books of the Bible. That mm -hmm. is the Torah. Mm -hmm. All right? So they wanted to trip, trip, try and trip Jesus up and to trick him on the law. 
with. They didn't know who they were dealing with. They my, didn't, my, they, my. Didn't, they didn't know that he was the one that penned the law. <laughs> 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 Praise God. And then, then it gets into them, them tricking him. And, and it's, it's almost like Jesus did the same thing he did with the woman that was caught uh, in the act of adultery. He turned the tables on them and confuses them. That's how, mm -hmm. And then they drop their stones and walk away. And here Jesus, wow. he then turns the table on his lawyer. And then he goes into this parable of the prodigal son. And we're going to deal with that. But that's how we get into uh, this this lesson or this uh, 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 story about the prodigal son is based on the fact that this lawyer wanted to know, Jesus did tell me who my neighbor is. Ooh. And in essence, Jesus was letting them know that everybody that you come in contact with, absolutely, everyone that you have any type of proximity to, is your neighbor. All mm. right. Amen. Our next caption says the first and second commandment. Jesus responded to the lawyer, Pastor. Mm. He responded to the lawyer in a brief answer that gave a synopsis of how to obey the Torah or how to obey those first five books of the Bible, the printed, interpreted word of God. And, and it's found in Matthew chapter 22. You got your Bible turned there. Chapter 22, verses seven, 37 through verses 40. Watch, watch this. Watch this. We read it. We read some of it, I believe, in our opening uh, verse we did. We read verses 36 and 37, but I want you to read down to verse 40. Uh, uh, go, I'm sorry, go to Luke. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 22. We read in Luke mm -hmm. chapter 10, verses 36 to 37. Matthew but I want 22. you to get Matthew 22, chapter 22, verses 37 to verses 40. All right. You have it? Yes, I do. All right, read that for us. What does that say? It says, Jesus said unto him, Yes. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Now, this is interesting. What did it say? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor Now, watch as this. Slow down, Pastor. Watch this. Mm -hmm. The first commandment, he says... He says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all of your soul. Mm -hmm. But watch what he says. He said, that's the first commandment. And great. That's the first and, and the great greatest commandment. greatest commandment. But watch this. But he says, the second is like unto it. Mm -mm. Did you get that? You underline that yes. in your Bible. Yes. Underline that in your Bible. Verse 39, it says, and the second is like unto it. In other words, you can't do one, Pastor, without, without doing the other. other. You can't do it. <laughs> he you said they it. he said they go hand in hand. Yes. The second is like unto it. Now read what does that say? That that next verse, verse, verse uh, thirty. What does it say? Thirty nine. And the second 39. is like unto read. it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, Read 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and on, the prophets. On these two commandments these two. hang all of the law. And the prophets. All of the law. All of it. And the prophets. Absolutely. Hang on these two commandments. In other words, I feel what Jesus is saying here. He said, if you get these two things wrong and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. matter. Right. He, he said, now if you get these two things wrong. There's going to be some issues. <laughs> If you get these two things wrong, then nothing else matters. You, you can forget it. Forget about it. He said you got to concentrate and focus on these two. You got to give these two things more diligence than you do any other yes. any, than any of the other commandments. My mm. God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's the first great commandment. And then he says the second one that's like unto it or similar to it is that you got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yes, you yes, know yes, that yes. that's really what God is really all about, love. Love. 
God is love. God is love. And, and that's 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 what the whole uh the whole gospel message is really centered around. God the love because St. John 3.16 is clear. It said, For God so loved the world that he love, gave love, love yeah, yeah, yeah. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but they shall, but they shall have everlasting life. So all of this salvation. All of, of, of the mercy and the grace that God mm. extends yes, to yes. humanity is all because of love. Love, 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 love. The fact that God loves us and he wants us to love him. Yes. And then he wants us to love others. Amen. As much as we love ourselves. That's something. That's awesome. Now that is really awesome, isn't it? That's that's really that is really and truly and truly awesome. Read our caption here. The first law comes from a passage commonly known as the Shema. Now the Shema was, uh, that was a Jewish uh, confession of faith and it consisted of three scriptures and it's a confession of faith that the Jews made on a regular basis. They did it during their time of worship and uh, if I'm not mistaken they did it every evening before they uh, retired before they went to bed mm -hmm. there was a confession that they made uh, from three scriptures and one of those scriptures we'll, re we'll talk about that it was Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 and then Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 13 through 21 and then Numbers chapter 15 verses 37 through verses 41 Amen. all right that's what the Shema was a confession of faith, a Jewish confession of faith that they made on a regular basis 